this demonstration, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the uh, new 5-axis multi-axis roughing uh, in GibbsCam 14. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, yeah, you can see the toolpath I have here. So this is, this is the uh, completed toolpath as we see it. Okay, so we're going to come back to this, but I'm just going to clean up the display here. And let's open the process and start to take a look um, at, at how this was accomplished. So you notice that there's calculation based on multi-axis machining. So you have to have this selected. Then once you do that under machining, you actually have three options, roughing, floor finishing, and wall finishing. Now, the roughing actually was added in the last release, but there wasn't a lot of attention or presentations done for it. Um, so we're including it here for a couple of reasons. The, the new things are floor finishing and wall finishing, but these are actually subsets of the roughing. So we're going to go ahead and use roughing as a vehicle um, to, to show you all of the functionality. So uh, I've got roughing selected. The next thing down you'll notice is the pattern. Okay, and we have three options. I have offset from floor. So if we look at the graphics here, um, the floor is this arched feature here. So we can see that each pass has that shape and it's shifted upward until such time as it gets bigger in the part and at that point it's trimmed off. So we'd have tool repositioning here at that point. We also have offset from ceiling. So again, in these graphics, uh, the ceiling is this horizontal line, so it keeps duplicating that until it has to be trimmed. And again, we'd have tool repositioning from here to here in this situation. My favorite is this one, morph between ceiling and floor. And the reason I like that is um, because it eliminates uh, the possibility of, not eliminates, but reduces the possibility of tool repositioning. So you can see we're gradually morphing from this horizontal line, in this case, uh, to the arch itself. So I personally like that. Uh, type, we have two types. Offset, offset is your tr traditional roughing, right? So you pick a pocket, it looks at the geometry, offsets it inwards until it collapses in on itself. And that's your pattern, right? So the other option we have, is adaptive. So adaptive is like volume mill. For those of you who have used uh, volume mill or in our advanced 3D machining, uh, the advanced pocketing, um, it's like that. It's smooth. There are no sharp corners. And uh, with adaptive technology in general, you're going to take deeper cuts than normal at a much higher feed rate. And another benefit of that is that your tool life goes way up. So this is the one we'll be concentrating on uh, in this particular one, okay? Uh, cutting method, one way or zigzag, that's true throughout Gibbscam. Nothing new here, but they've added it here for completeness, okay? Direction for one-way machining, climber conventional. Again, nothing new there, but added uh, to be complete, okay? So let's talk about uh, intermediate slices now, okay? So if we're, if we're doing a roughing in the graphics we see here, uh, the gray represents your major cuts, okay? So we have two major cuts in the graphics here, okay? Uh, what that means is that if I just do those major cuts, we're gonna get like a stair step effect, right? There's gonna be a lot of residual stock left and a lot of differential uh, stress on uh, the tools that uh, we use afterwards um, as it enters and leaves that differential stock. So that's not an ideal situation. What we'd really like to do is add in intermediate slices. In the graphics here, the intermediate slices are shown in red. So what that means is after we do these major cuts, we're then gonna march upwards in Z by a certain amount, in this case, 0.3 inches, Okay, so that more closely represents uh, the geometry that we're roughing out. Instead, of, it reduces that that stair step. Uh, the more that the more um, slices you have. Okay, another option we have here is uh, uh, detect 
thicker than. So if we are doing intermediate slices and we're moving up in Z, uh, there may reach a point where a part becomes too thin for us to go and risk doing that, okay? Because if you have a really thin area, it could cause vibration, cause your part to become out of tolerance. So what is uh, uh, thin? Well, you def you define what's thin here. So in this case, it's, it's 0.1 inches, okay? So that's a little bit on that. Now, um, going back to the intermediate slices, there's two ways we can approach this, okay? We can do it after each depth step. So you see the numbers here. So again, in the gray, these are our major slices, our major cuts. So we do a major cut. Then after the first major cut, we start going up with the NZ for those intermediate slices. Once all that's done, then we do the next major cut, labeled three here. Then we do the intermediate, intermediate slices starting at the bottom of this cut up until the first major cut, okay? And keep uh, following that procedure for as many slices as we have. Uh, the al alternative is after last depth step. So in other words, we're actually gonna do, in this case, one, two major cuts, and then after all the major cuts are done, we'll do the intermediate slices by moving up in Z as we see here, okay? Uh, step over, maximum and desired step over. So if you've used the advanced 3D uh, machining uh, roughing uh, with adaptive behavior, uh, this is exactly the same thing. Instead of dictating a static step over, you give it some leeway. I'll let you step over anywhere between this and this. Gives more flexibility and uh, generation of the, of the tool path. And then what our major steps are, okay, these major cuts, that's here. So in this case, we, we put a big number in, uh, which is three inches. Alternatively, we could also specify it by number of slices. So it looks at the thickness of the part, uh, the depth of the part rather, and then determines what the actual depth will be for that, okay? So that's a little bit on uh, setup on the surface pass. Um, now you notice if I go to part definition, you pick part surfaces. So in this case, the part surfaces are the blades, which we see here in yellow. Uh, you will notice that we have picked all of the blades of this impeller part. For those of you that have done roughing and impellers before with other functions within Gibbscam, uh, you know that you could specify one set and duplicate, okay? That is not true for this. You do have to pick all of the blades um, that you want to do, okay? In addition, this algorithm is somewhat picky. Let me put this part away. I'm gonna pull up something that we had to generate here, okay? So this is the floor surface. So uh, unlike the other roughing that you may have used, other roughing procedures you may have used, um, I can't just pick the hub that's been cut up by the blades. So you have to have a nice clean hub uh, for the entire part. So I went ahead and made this intermediate hub to do that, okay? So that is a requirement um, of this, okay? Uh, let's, uh, you notice you can't have differential stock for the blades or uh, the part and the floor, although they're set to the same value in this particular case. Let's go to the gouge check uh, tab. Uh, for those of you that have run 5-axis milling and Gibbs cam before, you know that this is usually much, much more complicated, okay? This algorithm is very intelligent. So what it means is you don't have to fill out as much. You don't have to baby it along. Um, it's smart enough uh, that it can do a lot more with a lot less information. In the same sort of way, if I go to the link, tab again found another five axis milling operations and processes um, this is much less complicated and in fact if i go to retracts <laughs> there's a whole area here that's completely gone now again because the algorithm itself is simply more intelligent uh, if i go to uh, roughing now you notice i do have a, a stock definition so um, we've gone ahead and defined uh, uh, stock here as well 
um, that we're going to use. So you can see it here. This is the stock that we went ahead and defined for this particular one. And then we just picked all the surfaces of, of this, <coughs> excuse me, to define the stock itself. Okay. All right. So that kind of is um, a background on, on the whole thing. So what this means is the end result is if I go back and show this tool path, right, we have that. Okay. So um, I'm not going to generate this um, because it takes quite a while to generate this. This tool path would probably take about 20 minutes to generate. So there is, that is, uh, you know, one slight disadvantage of using this is it takes a lot of computer horsepower. But let's go ahead and see this in action. Um, before I do that, I'm going to put in a stop because I want to uh, get right to the heart of the matter where we can see the adaptive behavior in this particular thing. So I'm going to go ahead and fire this up um, and let it get to that position. And I'll be just a minute or so. Okay, so now if I slow this down and go, we can now see this kind of looping behavior that you're used to seeing in like a volume mill or other adaptive roughing procedures. Nice and smooth, deep cuts. And again, the advantages are extended tool life, life and a shorter cycle on the roughing. <coughs> so, while this is running again in review, uh, you know, there are some cons or disadvantages. Uh, you do have to create clean floor geometry for this to work properly. You have to select all the blades, as I pointed out before. You can't just do one portion. Um, and then uh, the other disadvantage or con is that it takes a, a lot of horsepower. It takes a long time to generate these kinds of tool paths because um, it's very intelligent, it's making a lot of decisions. But there are some distinct advantages or pros. Uh, this is the only multi-axis roughing process with adaptive behavior. So again, that gives you the ability to cut faster and extend your tool life. And the other advantage is that um, you don't have to input as much information, right? So the, uh, as I pointed out, the gouge check, the link, and the retract options have been greatly simplified for this process. So that's uh, the end of the review of the five-axis, multi-axis roughing in Gibbs Cam 14.